Good morning, guys, or good afternoon, whether you're joining me from the present or the future. Welcome back to another Future Fight Vanguard video. Today, we're going to be finishing up uh, GBT 13 um, and stepping a little bit into the extra booster, uh, the G Extra Booster 2, which is the Zoo Nation. Um, we're basically playing catch up today on the videos that I deserve uh, or owed you guys from, I think, Wednesday to Friday uh, or, or to today, which is Saturday. Um, but yeah, let's get right into it. Um, we're going to be talking about the final deck of GBT 13 that we have to talk about, which is our Yasui deck. This is our Murakumo Ninja deck that got support in GBT 13. Um, it's honestly one of my favorite decks, if not my favorite deck uh, from GBT 13, hence uh, save the best for last, right? So it's actually one of my favorite decks um, just because of its ability to draw cards and attack your opponent a bunch of times force your opponent into bad spots where you punish them for guarding and it's just all around really good um but yeah let's get right into the grade threes so we run eight grade threes in this build uh reason being is that yasui is kind of like neo nectar and that you want to run uh copies of like four of copies of the cards that you do have uh just because when you run them at four of you have more um, chances to copy them, like they won't hit the damage zone. Like some of them will hit the damage zone, but not all of them, if you see what I'm saying. So um, you want to run as many copies as you can of your good cards. That way your um, cards won't hit the damage zone as often, and it won't matter as much when one does hit the damage zone. And you will still have uh, units to copy or uh, Bunshin no Jutsu. Um, so our first grade three is our new Yasui, um, not from this set, but it is our new newer Yasui. It is Stealth Rogue of the Trial Yasui. It has two abilities. Uh, the first one is a Shadow Stitch ability. Um, Shadow Stitch is the keyword for Murakumo that happens uh, whenever your opponent uh, guards the Vanguard usually. So whenever the uh, whenever the attack did not hit during the battle that the Sunni attacked the Vanguard. That's usually when the Shadow Stitch ability procs itself and it does whatever it does and usually they are really beneficial effects. Um, so the first Shadow Stitch ability is Vanguard or Rearguard Circle of Yasui. At the end of the battle that this unit attacked the Vanguard, if the attack did not hit, you get to draw a card and you choose a card from your hand and you put it on the bottom of your deck. So it allows you to filter out your hand similar to Air Water from Gear Chronicle. Um, in the Time Leap version, you just don't get to draw extra cards for it. If you did, that would be like so broken and this deck would be like a top deck in my opinion. Um, but you do not get to draw extra cards for it, which is unfortunate. Um, but at the same time, it is well deserved. Um, the second ability is on the Vanguard Circle. During your turn when your G unit strides, you can counter boss one. If you do, you get to choose one of your units, including Vanguard, since it just says units. Um, search your deck for up to one card with the same name as that unit. Call it to rear guard, shuffle your deck. And until the end of the turn, the called unit gets a Shadow Stitch ability. It says at the end of the battle that this unit attacked the Vanguard. If the attack did not hit, return this unit to your hand. So usually you want to target your own Vanguard when you're going for this stride skill because you can call out a grade 3 and then if your opponent just happens to block it, you can return it to your hand. Therefore, um, ensuring that you get to stride the next turn after that. So it's just very, very good. It's kind of like paying for itself in stride costs. Then we have um, four Furious Hair Stealth Rogue Ikaku. Um, Ikaku is a pretty swole card as well. Um, it's just better on the rear guard circle in this deck. So we do run it as our rear guard grade three. So we have our first ability, which is an auto that says when this unit is placed on Vanguard or rear guard, you can choose one of the cards on your circle other than Vanguard circle, put it on the bottom of your deck. If you do, this unit gets plus 5,000 until the end of the uh, turn. So this card is really good. Because number one, um, this card helps you get around Link Choker. So if your cards are locked, you're able to still target them with Ikaku because you're not targeting the cards, you're targeting, um, or sorry, you're not targeting units, you're targeting cards on the circle. So that does get around Link Choker. If you have a locked unit, you can put one of your locked units at the bottom of the deck and this card gets plus 5,000. The best part about that is that it doesn't actually unlock the card. So you're, if your opponent's playing like Chaos Breaker or something like that, they don't get to draw off of it and retire it with Crisis, which is really good because you can avoid them plussing off of you trying to um, unlock your cards. 
Then um, it also has a kind of like a combo with um, Yasui Tenma when you go into it. The way that Yasui Tenma works is it uh, provides a shadow stitch skill to the Vanguard that says, uh, at the end of the battle that your attack did not hit, you search for one card with the same name as the card that attacked. So basically you call Ikaku um, off the bat, you have it gain 5k, you attack with Ikaku, then you call another Ikaku, shove that Ikaku back down to the bottom, um, attack with Ikaku again, call another Ikaku, shove that Ikaku down to the bottom, and it's just 16, 16, 16, 16, until you run out of counter blast. So um, very, very good, like, I would not uh, really replace this. The second ability um, on top of that is really good, which is another Shadow Stitch ability that says Vanguard or Rearguard Circle Generation Break 1. At the end of the battle that the Sunni attacked the Vanguard and the attack did not hit, you can counter boss one. If you do, you get to choose a grade two or grade one from your drop zone. Search your deck for up to one card to the same card name as that card. Call it to a rearguard circle that this unit is not on, and then shuffle your deck. And at the end of the turn, put that unit on the bottom of the deck. So it allows you to call um, extra things for extra attacks. Like since some of your grade twos can attack from the back row in this deck, um, calling Ubushis to the back row is really good. Um, also calling Tombas, calling Simbas, um, even calling EQs can be really, really solid. Um, just I would just be careful about what you're calling. Obviously, whatever you call will go back to the bottom of the deck at the end of the turn. So you have to call something that you make sure that it's good for that turn because you're not effectively plussing because it's not going to be there at the end of the turn. Um, running into our grade twos, we have four Stealth Rogue of Envy EQ. Uh, EQ has two abilities. The first ability is a Shadow Stitch ability, uh, which is on the rear guard circle and Generation Break 1. At the end of the battle that this unit attacked the Vanguard, if the attack did not hit, you choose one of your units until the end of the turn it gets plus 2000 power and it gets a skill that allows it to attack from the back row so what eq does is basically you want to force your opponent into guarding eq so that you can um, play other grade twos and grade threes into the back row and attack with them from there uh, after you give their uh, eq skill to them um, so if your opponent's at five damage that's when shadow stitch hurts the most obviously because they have to guard everything or they die um, so yeah that's why we run eq um, the second ability is kind of like a mat ability, but it does help in some scenarios. It's when this unit is placed on rear guard circle, this unit gets plus 2,000 for each of your units with the off suite and its hard name until the end of the turn. So usually um, when you play it on rear guard circle, it'll, it'll gain 4k because you should have a Yasui that got called off of stride skill and then you should have a Yasui Vanguard. So usually plus 4k. Um, plus 6k in the rare case that you have two on the field. Um, then we have four Stealth Rogue of Retaliation, Ubushi. Um, this is another one of our really solid cards, like an MVP card in this deck. You have to run it at four. If you're not running at four, what are you doing? Um, and then it has a uh, first ability is the Auto Rear Guard ability. It says when this unit is chosen by the effect of your opponent's card, choose up to two cards in your circles other than Vanguard Circle and Guard Circle, return them to your deck. If one or more cards were returned, search your deck for up to two uh, Ubushi, call them a separate rear guard circle, and shuffle your deck. So basically, whenever this card is targeted, it just calls two more. So it's really, really good against control, obviously. But something to note is that when you're playing against cards that actually remove uh, Ubushi off of the board, you have to have another card on the field for you to um, activate Ubushi's skill. Let's go into a couple examples of that. So for example, if you're playing against Kagero, Kagero uh, targets this card and kills it. You have to, um, the kill would resolve first. So Ubushi would go to drop zone first um, and then Ubushi's skill would prop. So you would choose another card on your field and put it to the bottom of the deck and then you can call to Ubushi. But that Ubushi that went to the drop zone will still be lost to you um, because they retired it. So same thing with Narukami. Narukami will retire and bind. You will have to have another unit on the board to call two more. Um, Gear Chronicle will send it to the bottom. You have to have another unit to call two more. So in Gear Chronicle's case, if you have another unit on the board, when they send Ubushi to the bottom, it's literally useless uh, because you'll just call two more out. Um, and then if you're playing against Link Joker, this is another counter to Link Joker. It's honestly the best skill to have against Link Joker. Um, 
is when this card gets targeted and it's locked, it's still in the field. So then since this card targets cards and not units, again, you can send Ubushi, the locked Ubushi to the bottom of the deck, call two more. So it makes it so that your opponent can't really lock you out if they're playing Link Choker uh, because it just turned into a really bad situation for them. Um, the second ability is Shadow Stitch on uh, the rear guard circle once per turn, Generation Break 2. At the end of the battle that your unit uh, attacked the Vanguard and the attack did not hit, if you have a Vanguard with Yasuo in its name, until the end of the turn this unit can attack from back row and it gains 7,000 power. So this card um, attacks for 16k automatically and it can attack from back row whenever your opponent blocks an attack. So the best um, case scenario is to have these in the back row just ready for your opponent to block an attack and as soon as they do you get three extra attacks so it's great um then we run four stealth rogue of grudge uh sode hagi uh sode hagi is a decent card um i wanted to run it over yashibayashi just to try it out um because yashibayashi costs soul and we do run um two shibaraku vester in this deck so we kind of want to keep our uh, hang on to our soul a little bit and not waste it so i did try out this new card um sode hagi it is a decent card it's not um better than eq or ubushi by far um but it does help you in some scenarios it's shadow stitch is regular circle once per turn generation break two at the end of the battle the student attacks vanguard and the attack did not hit you can counter boss one and choose one, one, another Sode Hage from your rigor circle put on the bottom. If you do, you stand this unit and it gets plus 5,000 power. So this becomes really good um, because it becomes kind of like a crayon tiger effect um, or like a victor effect sort of where you um, attack with your vanguard, you stack all the triggers on Sode Hage and then you attack with Sode Hage, uh, your opponent blocks it I assume. And then you send a, so another Sode Hage to the bottom, counter boss one, restand it, it gets 5k, you attack again. So if you get um, crit checks uh, and your opponents have 4 damage, you can honestly just stack all of it on Sode Hage to, to make your opponent have to block. Um, then going to our grade ones, we run two gateway stealth rogue Ataka. Ataka is our Yasui stride fighter. Pretty self explanatory. You want to reach Yasui. Um, when you have any Kaku in your hand and this in your hand, you want to go search out for that Yasui that you want to ride as your designated ride target. And then also you want to stride as effectively as possible all the time, which means striding with one card and this card can do that for you. Um, running four PGs as usual, uh, Stealth Fiend White Heron. White Heron can only block Vanguard, so that is something that should be noted. Um, however, if you uh, PG with a White Heron and there's a White Heron in your drop zone already, you can counter charge one. So you are able to counter charge. I wouldn't say this deck is counter boss heavy necessarily. Um, it can be, uh, it can be counter boss heavy depending on how you use it. But if you use it well, you shouldn't be feeling the hurt from your counter blast. But White Heron just helps a little bit more with that. Um, then we have four Stealth Rogue of Entertainment Simbi. Simbi has two effects, uh, which are really good as well. This is another one of our anti-Link Joker cards as well. Uh, so it has an activation skill on Rear Guard Circle. This is Counter Boss 1. Put a card from your drop zone to the bottom of the deck. Choose two of your units until the end of the turn. One of them loses 5,000 and the other one gains 5,000. And then at the end of the turn, you return the Simbi to your hand. So this becomes really good because you play Simbi on the board. You get to return triggers to your deck, number one. And then number two, you get to make weaker units stronger and stronger units weaker. So you can even choose your Vanguard. You can make your Vanguard from 26K stride to 21K stride and then give one of your rear guards plus 5K, uh, making it more pressure for your opponent to guard that attack. Because usually your opponent's just gonna PG Vanguard anyways. So taking away power from your Vanguard as long as you don't take away too much um, so that your opponent's able to guard it with like one or two cards um, is really, really good. Um, its second ability as well activates from the hand. If you're a Generation Break 1, you can Soul Blast 1. Another reason why we did not run a, uh, run Yasha Biashi in this spot, because we want our Soul Blast in case we do run into Link Joker. Um, but you Soul Blast 1, you discard this card, and then you choose one of the cards on your circle other than Vanguard Circle put on the bottom of your deck, and then you can draw two cards. So it's effectively a break even, considering that you discard Simbi and you put the other unit um, to the bottom of your deck and then you draw two so it evens out but however if you're playing against link joker it just evens out in a plus in my opinion because you get to get rid of that locked unit and draw two cards 
Um, then we run three Stealth Rogue of Concealment, Tomba. Uh, Tomba has its own Shadow Stitch skill. It says at the end of the battle that any unit attacked Vanguard, if the attack did not hit, you can choose a normal unit from your drop zone, put it back to your deck. And then if you do, this unit gets plus 3,000 power until the end of the turn. So Tomba helps you, um, Tomba is your recycle engine basically. You get to recycle any normal unit. Uh, Simbi helps you recycle triggers. So this deck basically never decks out. Um, if you deck out with this deck, you are probably bad. Uh, but yeah, this deck uh, recycles a lot and you should never be decking out with this deck. Um, also Tomba can just get super big and Tomba is also really good on those turns where we go into Tenma once again because of how Tenma works with the Shadow Stitch. Um, then for our starter, we run one uh, Disciple Stealth Rogue Minosuke. Minosuke has two abilities. Uh, first one is the Forerunner ability, as usual, that allows you to move back whenever ridden upon. The second ability is a Rigor uh, skill that says when this when an attack hits a Vanguard during the battle that this unit boosted a unit with a Shadow Stitch ability, you can shove this card into the soul. If you do Counter Charge 1, choose up to one card with the Shadow Stitch ability from your drop zone, put it to the bottom of your deck, and then if a card was put, then you draw a card. So a lot of times I'll use this card even if I don't have the Counter Blast um, to Counter Charge or whatever. Um, if I get it off, I will usually just use it because the earlier you can use Aminosuke, honestly, the better because your opponent will start blocking from then on so that you won't be able to use Aminosuke for the rest of the game. So it's better to get it out of the way early and use it to get that extra draw than not be able to use it in the late game and it still be on your field. Then we have uh, for our triggers, six crit, six draw, and four heal. For our crits, we run um, four Masamura. This is our uh, generation break, or it, it's not generation break, but it came out in G era. Uh, it is our G era Yasui crit that shoves itself to the soul when your Vanguard attacks and gives your Vanguard 5,000 and then you draw a card. So it makes your Vanguard bigger, builds your soul, self-explanatory. Um, then we run two Cat Devil. Cat Devil can put itself into your soul during your main phase and give any of your Murakumo units plus 3,000 power. So it builds your soul, gives your units plus 3k. Pretty solid. Um, I don't use this card as much unless I'm going for game or I really need a card to be able to swing um, over a little bit over a threshold. Um, but yeah, it is what it is. Uh, then we run four of the new draw trigger, uh, Shira, Saga uh, Shira Sagi. Uh, so Shirasagi, uh, it, it acts as a Margul clone basically. During the um, main phase you can shove into the soul, give one of your units plus 3000 power, uh, just like Cat Devil, except that Shirasagi is a 5k shield and Cat Devil is a 10k shield. So I'd much rather use Shirasagi to shove into the soul, give 3k, than uh, use Cat Devil. Then we run uh, two Lantern Ghost or Monster Lantern because it's just the cutest draw trigger ever. If you're not running this draw trigger, you're insane and you are racist against ghosts. <laughs> but um, then we run four Stealth Fiend uh, Tamayuki for our heal trigger. This is our new binding heal uh, for Murakumo, allowing you to, when you G-guard with this card, binding two heals from your drop zone, and then you can counter charge one or soul charge one, which keeps our resources in check. Um, going to our G zone, we have one zero Dragon of Inferno Drachma because this is a red clan, of course. Um, it is our ultimate stride. Obviously, you can ultimate stride into it by discarding the same card that's on your Vanguard, um, as long as you have three or more units face up in the G zone already. And then you can stride this card at the end of the stride um, phase where this card was strode. You bind your whole G zone uh, face up and face down. So you can no longer reach Generation Break and it's kind of like a last resort card to go into. Uh, the skill is when this unit is placed on Vanguard Circle Counter Blast 2, if you do retire all your opponent's units, including Vanguard, bind them face up, your opponent chooses three cards from their hand, discards two, and then rides a card to Vanguard Circle. So it's really important to um, keep track of what your opponent has in their hand and what they drive check whenever you are thinking about going into this card because um, you want to go into this card when they don't have a grade three in their hand to ride. Sometimes you just won't know and you'll just uh, go into it off of instinct and you'll just be able to, you know, make your, your opponent ride a grade zero or a grade one, which can be amazing. That's pretty much just game ending right there, um, regardless of being generation break for the end of the game or not, uh, because then your opponent has to deal with all of your attacks on that stride turn 
And then also they have to deal with your attacks after when you're a grade three and they are not grade three. So very, very good. Then we run for uh, Law Deity of the Fifth Caution Yasui Genma. This is a new card that came out in this set and this card is pretty freaking amazing. Um, it has two abilities, the uh, first an activation skill. This is a Soul Bloss one and flip a card face up with the same name as this unit. Choose a card from your drop zone or rear guard circle. Search your deck for up to one card with the same name as that unit, call it to rear guard circle. And then not only do you get to call a card for free, but at the end of the turn, you return the called unit to your hand. So if you call a grade three, you need stride fodder. You can just call a grade three, at the end of the turn, bounce it to your hand, super easy. Um, then it has a shadow touch ability. It says generation break three. At the end of the battle that this unit attacked and uh, the attack did not hit, you choose up to five of your units and they get plus 5,000 and a critical. So because of this, when you're generation break three and you attack your opponent and they're at four damage or five damage, they'll usually just take this and hope for a heal or hope that you don't check a crit because they usually don't want to deal with you giving plus 5,000 and a crit to your whole field. Um, they usually can't block that anyways. Um, so then uh, our next G unit, we have two Ambush Demon Stealth Row Yasui Tenma. Uh, we did talk about this card a bit when we were talking about the main deck. It has an activation skill that is Generation Break 2. Uh, you flip a Yasui Tenma face up in your G zone. And then until the end of the turn, this unit gets a Shadow Stitch ability. It says at the end of the battle that your unit attacked the Vanguard. If the attack did not hit, you counter boss one. And you search your deck for up to one card with the same name as the unit that attacked and calls your rear guard circle. Shuffle your deck. So something important to note is that if you have no hand, you go into Yasui Temba, you are still able to call um, a Yasui off of the Yasui Temba skill because you have, um, assuming that you're on uh, Stealth Rogue of the Trial Yasui, you still have the name being transferred to your Vanguard. So at the end of the battle that your Vanguard attacks and that is a unit um, and it does not hit, you can counter boss one, call a, a Yasui Trial to the deck. But usually you go into this card when you have access to either Ikaku or Tomba, just because of how they work with such great unison. Also, you go into this when your opponent's at five damage and you kind of force a win out of them. Then we have um, two Ambush Demon Stealth Dragon Shibaraku Buster. This is kind of like our Alfred Stride in Blasters, uh, for those of you who are familiar with that, except this card came first. Uh, so it has an activation ability that is Generation Break 2. It says Counter Boss 1, Soul Boss 2, Choose a card from your hand, discard it, and then choose a card from your drop zone and return it to your deck. Um, then you choose one of your units. You search one card with the same name as that unit, call it to rear guard circle, shuffle your deck, and then at the end of the turn, or until the end of the turn, this unit gets uh, a drive check for the first battle during this turn. Uh, at the end of the turn, you put that unit to the bottom of the deck. So what you always want to do with Shibaraku Buster is a couple things to note. Obviously you counter boss, obviously you soul boss, obviously you discard, um, but the fourth part of the cost is you return a card from your drop zone to your deck so you can return triggers with this that's very very important because you're like literally going to search after that and then you're going to shuffle your deck so it's shuffling the trigger back into your deck you're not just putting it on the bottom which increases your chance to drive check it when you're doing all your drive checks um however you do want to call a grade three off of shibaraku buster's ability because when it gives the unit a drive check if you call a grade two a grade one or a grade zero it will get plus, uh, it will just get a single drive check. But if you call a grade three, since they have triple drive already, um, it will basically gain twin drive because Shibaraku Buster is giving them the ability to drive check and not just giving them a single drive check, if that makes sense. So um, you do want to make sure that you're calling a grade three and you do want to make sure that you're attacking with that grade three first in the turn so that you can actually get the drive checks. Uh, then we have our Generation Break 8 Ambush Demon Stealth Dragon Mandala Ryoho, uh, or Ryo, however you would like to pronounce it. Um, it has an activation skill that is Generation Break 1. You choose two cards from your drop zone, return them to your deck. Again, another card that can return triggers. And then you search your deck for up to two cards with the same card name as this unit, and then call it to separate rear guard circle until the end of the turn, they get a Shadow Touch ability. This says at the end of the battle that your Vanguard attacked a Vanguard. If the attack did not hit, then you get to move this stand unit to your Vanguard Circle Shuffle your deck. So what this card allows is that you basically want to go into this card when your opponents have 5 damage. You go into this card, you activate the skill, you put back Yasui's if you need to. If you don't need to, then you put back Triggers. You call two Yasui's out since they share name with your Vanguard. Uh, two Yasui Grade 3's that is. And then you swing at them with your Vanguard. 
Um, if they block it, if they take it, they die because they take a damage and they take their six damage and they die. Or they block it and you get to discard three cards from your hand and then uh, choose one of the grade uh, three Yasuis that's on your rear guard and just straight up move it onto uh, Vanguard Circle and then attack and get drive checks again. Um, and then if they block that one, you can discard three again to put the other one on your Vanguard Circle. So it allows for, um, it's basically like a restander in a way. Um, the trigger effects do carry over, so if you check triggers during this and you put them to the unit that you're going to move to Vanguard, they do retain the trigger power since they're only moving to the Vanguard circle and they are not like rewriting or anything like that. Um, then we run one air element Sabreeze. You guys already know what it is. When your opponent tries to grade lock against you, you just Sabreeze and you mess their day up. Um, then for our G Guardians, we run two Ambush, Demon, Stealth, Rogue, Shira, Hagino. Shira Hagino is a pretty good card. It is our G Flip Guardian from the newest Fighters collection. You kind of boss one and you flip a card for, uh, face up from your G zone. And then um, it's when this unit is put on the guard circle that you do that. And then you choose one of your Vanguard that gets an ability until the end of the turn. That says when your grade three or less is retired from uh, guard circle, you can put that card on the bottom of the deck and this unit gets plus 10,000 power. So basically, um, when this card first comes out, you use this skill. It's a 36k block for you. And then any um, other card that you block with will be able to go to the bottom of the deck until the end of that turn. So this helps a lot when you use this card as your first block or one of your first blocks. And then you guard with grade zeros after that. And then the grade zeros, which are triggers, will be going back to your deck. So that's really good. Then we run um, two uh, Ambush Demon Stealth Rogue Shishi Yuzuki. Uh, so Shishi Yuzuki, the way that she works is that um, when this unit is placed on guard circle during the battle that your opponent's vanguard attacked your vanguard, then you can choose um, one of your rear guards, move it to guard circle, that unit gains 5,000 shield, and then you can search your deck for up to one card with the same name as that unit, call it to guard circle, shuffle your deck. So not only does this card thin out your deck, um, it does allow you to take like a grade two, add 10,000 shield to it, and then you get to call another of that same grade two, uh, making it a plus 15k shield. Um, if you do it with a grade zero, then you are um, able to choose a grade zero, call another grade zero for usually a no pass, because that's a pretty large shield. Because uh, your grade zero, um, assuming that it is a 10k block, will gain 5k more, making it 15, and then you'll call another 10k. So that will be um, 26, 41, 51 k block. So that's just really big. Um, but make sure that you keep in mind that you can only use them when your opponent's vanguard attacks into your own vanguard. Um, then our last G-Guardian we are running is Ambush Demon Stealth Fiend Hogan Wing. Uh, Hogan Wing skills when it's placed on the guard circle. Choose one of your grade one or greater units. Search your deck for up to one card of the same name as it. Uh, call it to guard circle and then at, at the end of the battle um, or until the end of the battle the unit that you call to the guard circle gets an effect. It says when this card is put into the drop zone from guard circle, you put it to the bottom of your deck. So you're not actually losing a card when you use Hogan Wing uh, to block with the card. And that is very important to note because a lot of people don't keep that in mind. They think that they're, use, uh, that they're losing a unit when they go into uh, Hogan Wing to block. So opening up our games here, we're going to get right into the games. Uh, we're going to load up Yasui 1. Uh, so game one, we're playing the mirror match against another Yasui deck. Um, our opponent goes first, rides, we ride, we attack. Uh, for 12, we check a Yasui, which we needed because we needed a grade three. Our opponent rides, attacks us, we had a draw trigger, we draw. Um, we attack the Vanguard, we don't hit anything this time. Our opponent rides a grade three, attacks us, gets a heal and a draw trigger, which is pretty good. We take a damage, we don't get anything, we discard two cards of stride. We use Yasui's ability to kind of boss one, bring a Yasui to the field, and then we use Gimma to bring an EQ to the field. Uh, then we call a Yasui crit and we call a um, Ubushi, uh, preparing for if he guards or not. Then we use the Shadow Stitch of EQ when we attack to his Vanguard to give our back row plus 2k, and then um, Ubushi gets 7k from its own. We attack a Vanguard, he takes it. Uh, we use Mino Skate skill, also the Shadow Stitch of Ubushi went off, uh, allowing us to attack. Uh, from the back row for 26 because we stack the triggers there um, He starts into his turn. He draws a card. He discards a, uh, two cards for stride He uses the same ability stride ability to bring Yasui to the field calls a Tanba and Then he calls a heal to the board uh, to put it back to the bottom and draw two cards 
So he's kind of like the type of Yasui player that likes to play um, triggers to the board just so that he can return them with the skills. Um, I'd rather just keep like stockpile my hand and keep like a heal trigger in the case that I'm being attacked for super big and I need to protect myself. Um, but that's just me. Uh, so he attacks with Vanguard and he checks no triggers. Uh, we take a damage. It is the Ikaku. He uses his own Minosuke uh, skill to put back a card, draw a card. And then uh, we block his rear guard, allowing him to uh, draw one, discard one, and then put it back to the hand. Or, sorry, draw one, put one back to his deck. We guard his back row, he puts one back with Tomba, and then he Tombas our rear guard, we block that as well. Um, and then we, uh, we go into another, um, another Yasui Gimma. We use the Shride Skill to call a Yasui, and then we use, uh, Gimma Skill to call a Ubushi, and we call a Ubushi from our back row, so we basically have the perfect hand. Uh, we attack a Vanguard, and even though he has a huge hand, he no guards because he knows that we're gonna get plus 5,000 in a crit to everything. So, um, he no guards Vanguard, and we do end up checking a critical and a heal making that the GG for game one. So um, I played this I played this deck in a $500 tournament uh, around the time that GBT 13 first came out. And this deck is just like really threatening to your opponent. Like when they realize that you're gonna give 5,000 and a critical to all five of your units, they're usually just like, okay, well, I'm just gonna, you won't check a crit. And that's usually when you check a crit because you've just like thinned out your deck with units and stuff like that. Uh, you also have to consider that when you hit your draw triggers, that's thinning out your deck as well, as long as you're not drawing into a critical. Starting out Yasui game two, we're playing the mirror match again. Um, this time we have a grade one, two, and three, which is awesome. We ride, we attack. Um, he rides, he checks a heal, pretty good. Uh, we attack with the rear guard, and then we hit a heal as well. Um, and then we use Mina State skill to heal off the unit that was uh, healed off, and then draw a card. We go into Yasui, um, he attacks our rearguard so that he doesn't give us any counter boss, but honestly we don't really need it in this deck, like counter boss is just a bonus, because most of our effects go off of soul blast, etc. And so, um, we attack with Vanguard, we check a critical, he takes two damage, and then we attack with Ubushi from the back row, he guards uh, with a G guard. Then he goes into his own um, Yasui Genma, which is kind of like the thing about G guarding so that you can use Yasui Genma's GB3. It's kind of useless because your opponent only guards it when they're at high damage already, which means that the most natural way to take it, or to, uh, course of action you should take, is just letting your opponent um, kind of do their thing uh, and not trying to generation accelerate to get to this card. Um, I don't know if that's what he was trying to do, but it just seems like he was. Um, then we take two damage. Uh, he did also not use... Um, his starter Mino save skill, which I don't know why, but uh, we do stride into our own, and then we attack a Vanguard for 26. Uh, he says, Crit you win, so he no guards. Uh, we check three cards. Uh, the, the one is a draw trigger, we put it to our rear guard, we draw a card, and then he hits a crit trigger, which is pretty unfortunate for us, honestly, because it um, made two of our, or three of our attacks null and void, pretty much. Uh, but we are able to attack with Ikaku, use Ikaku to call a Ubushi, and then we um, attack with our three Ubushi in the back row uh, to get 5k out of his uh, hand each time. So honestly, if he hadn't checked that trigger, we would have like weakened him so hard, he might have actually died there. Um, so I guess it's good they checked the trigger for himself. Uh, so he goes into his own Yasui Genma, uh, he uses no on stride Yasui skill, um, and then he calls an Ubushi. He uses uh, the skill of Yasui Genma to call a grade three. Um, and then he attacks our Vanguard. We no guard. Like I said, Yasui Genma is not threatening if you're not at high damage. Uh, he proceeds to check no triggers. We take damage. It is a Simbi. He uses a starter skill this time uh, to Minosuke. And then uh, we guard his rear guard. We guard his other rear guard. Um, draw one, discard one or sorry, draw one, put one to the bottom of the deck. That card bounces itself. And then um, he attacks for 16, and then he attacks for 16 with his other card. So we stride again. Uh, this time we go into Yasui Timma. Honestly, um, I should have just used Ikaku skill to put that card to the bottom and then proceeded to attack as usual. 
and played down the Ibushis to the field and tried to make like a relative field out of that. Um, but honestly, I just wasn't thinking about it. And I didn't, I don't think I knew the combo at this point. Um, so I just attacked with the Ikaku. I used the Ikaku skill to call over Ikaku. Um, and then um, sending a unit back to the deck with Tamba. And then I attack Vanguard for 16. Um, he has to guard with a 10. And then I attack for 11. Uh, he does guard that as well. Um, I return two, um, two more Ikakus. Uh, so I wanted to attack with Vanguard to save that last counter blast for uh, Soda no uh, Hagi skill. And I assumed that I would check more than one trigger, but I didn't. So I just attack with Soda no Hagi, um, use its skill to restand it, attack for 19, and then he G guards the final one. Um, so yeah, this time uh, it's his turn again. And he strides into his own Yasui Tenma. Um, he calls a Sinbi. Uh, he uses the Kaku skill to put it to the bottom. He attacks for 16. We do check a heal trigger, uh, putting power to our Vanguard, but we do not heal, however. Um, he does triple drive and get a critical trigger, putting uh, the power on one of his rear guards. And then he realizes that since I took Ikaku, he can't use his skill to call Ikaku back to back to back to back to back. Um, he, but he does call another Ibushi just to force a little bit more pressure off of us. But it is not that much pressure since we checked the trigger. Um, so I was kind of thinking about what I should do here. I meant to G guard during my last turn so that I could GB8 him. Uh, but I honestly wasn't thinking about it at all. And I went about it the wrong way. So I decided to just uh, call Yasui off stride skill have a useless Shibaraku Buster on the field, and then try to go for five attacks, basically. Uh, so then we attack with both of our rear guards. Um, Tamba skill puts the card back to the bottom and gets 3k. And then we attack with one of our 16ks, just so that he has to guard it. We put one back and changes the guard state for our Vanguard. We attack for 42 with Vanguard. Um, we check three cards. And the last one is a critical going to our Ubushi. Then we attack for 21 from the back row. He PGs that as well. Um, making his hand with no cards and then he top deck stride fodder and he strides but he could have went to the GB8 and finished me but he didn't um, he just goes into Yasui Goma instead but honestly I don't think I can guard all the attacks from that anyways so it just ends up being a fact of um, me thinking and then I G guard his vanguard uh, with uh, Shizu, Shishi Yuzuki uh, using the skill to move an Ibushi. Um, I probably should have moved Tomba, uh, honestly, but it didn't really matter. Uh, he does check a heal trigger. He heals down a damage. And I think if it had not been for that heal trigger check, I think I would have survived, actually. Um, because that, like, 15 going to 20 was the thing that uh, kind of prevented me from winning just because I had enough to block a 10, a 10, a 10, and a 5 in my hand. So um, we do end up losing the second Yasui game, and that is unfortunate, but we did misplay by not um, G-guarding to go into our GB8. Uh, so yeah, that is important to be noted. Especially when we realized that it was the last attack of the turn and we had two G-guards in our hand. Like, I even thought about it, like I thought on my whole turn, I thought on my opponent's turn, and then I just didn't do it. Sometimes that just happens to Vanguard when you think too far ahead. You just don't do the play that you were originally thinking about. Um, and you forget about it. But um, our game three, uh, we're playing against like a Liberator Rush deck. Um, we don't ride, but we check a draw trigger. And we draw into a grade one, which is what we needed to not G-assist, which is pretty good. Uh, we ride our grade one. Uh, he attacks us for 16, then attacks us again. We check another draw trigger, draw. And then we uh, start our own grade two rush uh to get a little pressure off of us and um a lot of people don't realize that like kind of like the best um the best defense is a good offense in some situations in vanguard because uh you are able to just relieve a little pressure off your attack uh, or off yourself by attacking multiple times um but then we attack a vanguard after we stride we check a heal trigger we heal down a damage which is pretty solid then we use minose skill um, attack with Ikaku, and then we attack with both of our rear guards, ending our turn. 
and then he goes into Garmor um, because he G guarded during my last turn. So he wants to aim to use the GB2. Um, thankfully, we have a grip in our hand. We have a bunch of cards. So this is kind of like another thing that I was talking about with the Osway. Like when you run six draw, you continuously put the draw triggers back to your deck. And it allows you to just draw cards, draw cards, draw cards all day, all day long. So um, you're able to just, you know, keep doing your thing and make things happen, make magic happen. And by magic, I mean sacking your opponent. But what other kind of magic is there in Vanguard besides that? Am I right? But uh, he goes to use Garmore skill. He checks the top six uh, for High Beast. And I say Human Squad, uh, hoping that most of the cards are human because the way that they work in that deck is they're either human or High Beast usually. So he does check four humans off of the top, which I found pretty funny. Um, then I PG his Vanguard because it does not have a critical, but it has an on hit would kill me. And by that, I mean I would take six damage and die. So I guard all of his attacks. Um, I go into Yasui Gimma. I use the Shard skill to call a Yasui. Um, I use the Gimma skill to call another Ubushi. And then I just play an EQ. And this is pretty much a field that he has to no guard Vanguard. Uh, he says, Critten, you in. And I check three cards. And I thought I wasn't going to check the critical, but then I did. Uh, so then he takes two damage. And yeah, that ends up being the game. So a lot of times your opponent will just no guard. On uh, Genma, you won't even have to do anything, and you just sack them, I guess, and you win. Um, honestly, I prefer to go into Genma when I'm at 5 damage, but 4 damage is just enough pressure as well. Uh, just considering that you have rear guards left after that, that if they don't check a trigger, will um, allow you to kind of force them into a wall even more with 5 more attacks, assuming that you have the perfect field. Um, so yeah, that's really, really good to uh, keep in mind. But yeah, that has been our Yasui Future Fight. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, leave a like. As usual, it helps more than you guys think. Um, make sure that you uh, leave any questions about the deck or the deck list or the build um, or how to play any additional questions in the comments down below. Uh, make sure to check out our description. It has Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all of our social medias as well as, uh, as, well as future ways to support the channel even more than just subscribing as far as like Patreon and, you know, uh, the merch store. But yeah, um, I will be updating you guys with a second video um, or probably a third or fourth video today. Uh, but yeah, with that being said, this has been Josh from Cardfight Empire and I'll see you guys on the next video. Peace.